looking at the opportunities for convenience retail globally, um, we know your, you know, your strategy, uh, some of your strategy, and it's, it's rolling out. But we're also in a time of, of, of challenge and disruption to all retail, including convenience and fuel retail. Um, what do you do about that? You know, what's the, how, do you, how do you cope with that uh, in a large business? Uh, I think disruption, you could either look upon it as something bad or something good to move forward. Um, I'm the type of leader that looks to disruption as an opportunity to further develop. I think uh, it will happen a lot within retail. I don't have the recipe, but I think a lot will change. Um, and. Um, Obviously, uh, kind of the core of our business uh, fuel. Uh, we know that the electric car is coming. We know that uh, the, the car manufacturers are about to solve kind of the production issues. Uh, in a couple of years, the cars will be cheaper to produce than a normal car. It's much cheaper for a customer to maintain it. The reach kind of. Uh, uh, the, uh, the problem with the reach is almost solved. Uh, next year, Audi will come with a car that goes 600 kilometer, etc., etc. So I don't think you can stop that, uh, 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 and I think it will happen. Uh, what's more, what's important for me is that okay, if fuel drops, uh, the most important thing is keeping the customer. Uh, that is vital, uh, and then I think that. Uh, uh, whether you have an electric car or you're having a fuel car, you have to wash the car, you have to uh, buy some uh, articles for the car, etc. So I think we still have a purpose there. Maybe car wash will be even more important strategic. I think that um, uh, there will be a certain part of the network where you need superchargers. Uh, we know that uh, the big car manufacturers in Europe has gone together to create over 4,000 supercharging spots in Europe. So I, I, I think that's an important thing. But the big electric charging market, it's at home or at work. So there will be an, a strategic road saying, should we go into that market? Yes or no? Uh, and then I think the box itself creates huge opportunities. We know convenience. Um, I think food on the go, all the on the go products will be very important, but maybe at a much higher level quality, on freshness, on uh, variety, on seating, on toilet capacity, all of that will be uh, much more important. Um, uh, and um, I'm also looking at uh, what about standalone stores? I mean, uh, cities will change dramatically. Cars will be banned in the city, maybe only electric cars. Um, uh, maybe we need some flagships, some branding st branded stores in the cities that actually tell what uh, the whole uh, whole uh, uh, chain has uh, of uh, product offer. And, and last but not least, I think loyalty, uh, or loyalty is a wrong word actually, loyalty programs. I would rather call it relationship marketing, because that's what it is. Um, and segmentation I think will be gone due to technology. Uh, it will be uh, every customer is one segment. So th the loyalty part will be vital so you don't lose the customer, that you are able to keep it within kind of the company. Very interesting. Now you talk about, just picking up on one aspect of what you've just talked about the, on disruption, um, obviously it's a management book so you, you, you often talk about uh, ideas and challenges and then you propose a toolkit in, to deal with it. And you have in this case, because I think there's a very good idea in the book about developing a two clock speed culture, um, which I thought really nicely provided a solution to legacy businesses who, ha who are challenged by disruptors coming in and stealing their market and not really being able to respond to that uh, in a traditional way. Tell us a bit more about this twin clock speed approach, because I think it's a really big idea. Yeah, if you take the example of disruption, I think there's uh, one type of company saying that, uh, wow, this is uh, so exciting, and the whole company is kind of getting uh, into this uh, the, uh, future business. Uh, and in that process, they tend to forget their current business. Um, uh, the other type of uh, companies say, uh, 
Well, you know, this disruption, I don't think it will happen. It will go over by itself, uh, and at least it will not hit our company. Um, both of them are wrong. I don't think it's either or. I think it's both. So I think a sound company, you need, uh, whenever there's disruption, you need to kind of focus on the current business. For instance, we sell 9 billion liters of uh, fuel. Uh, and even the, if the electric cars are coming, we, we can't stop doing that. That's a cash flow machine. So we want to sell the last drop and we will focus on fuel until the last drop is gone. But at the same time, we want to have people working with the future. For instance, electric cars, etc. Uh, and you have to be able as a leader and as a company to have both, both uh, worlds in, in at the same time without kind of destroying your business. Now, another thing you said, you talked about standalone uh, convenience stores and uh, a question I suppose uh, comes up there is thinking about young people and, and how they use stores, but also automobiles and the relationship that they have with automobiles. Um, automobiles have always been traditionally a bit of a coming of an age experience for young people. They represent independence and status and all those things. Do you think that's changing? Because certainly looking at the US and, and looking at the numbers of young people who are getting their driving license, it is falling in, in parts of the world. So perhaps, do you think there's, there's something there that's happening that we need to watch very closely? Yes, I do. Um, and especially if you say the young people, they, they are not so focused on owning things anymore uh, that we were born in the 60s, 70s, etc. Then kind of owning things was kind of a status symbol. It kind of uh, framed who you are, etc. Young people today, as I see it, are much more uh, focused on the purpose of things, the values, why they do things. Uh, and therefore, a uh, car for them is much more practical. It's uh, convenient, so for them, they can share a car, uh, they can uh, lease a car, they can uh, do different kind of transport solutions, they can ride together with uh, other the people that have a car. They don't need to own things, uh, and I think that will change dramatically. And car sharing uh, will come, I think. I think the ultimate thing will be that you just pick up your phone, uh, have an app and say, uh, I want to go from A to B now. You push that and then uh, you have put in a profile by yourself, what type of car you want, how many people you want to ride with. And then it comes driving and there's no chauffeur. It's a self-driving car. It's kind of a personal bus.